After my last Portal Paradox video, there were some interesting questions raised. Here's a link to that video if you're interested. To recap though, the Portal Paradox asks, what happens if you put a portal on a piston that slams onto the ground and then a portal on a flat surface and then put a cube underneath that piston? What happens to the cube as the piston slams over the ground? Does the cube shoot out the other end? Or does it just stop after exiting the portal? I argue that it shoots out, but as many of you pointed out, there's a problem. What about the conservation of momentum? The cube stops and then suddenly gets momentum after it exits. How could that happen? Another really interesting question that a lot of you brought up is, well, what happens if the piston stops halfway through the cube? Before I get to answering these questions, I'd like to thank this video sponsor, Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN is running a fantastic Black Friday deal right now. You can get Atlas VPN for three years at $1.70 per month plus six extra months. With Atlas VPN, you can get around region locks that block streaming content in your country. Websites you visit will not know your IP address and therefore won't know your location. You can choose what part of the world you want to browse from. Search engines like Google won't be able to use your IP address to track and tailor results specifically for you. Atlas VPN is way more than just a VPN. It blocks malicious links, ads, and trackers. Atlas VPN will even watch for data breaches and let you know when your information is leaked online. Atlas VPN can even help you find deals on a variety of websites, including Netflix, Spotify, hotels, and even more. Atlas VPN is usable on an unlimited number of devices, so you can secure all your computers, phones, and tablets, all with a single subscription. So if you've been considering getting a VPN, you should jump on this deal. The link is in the description down below. Based on the response to my last Portal Paradox video, not all of you were convinced that I had the right solution. To understand what happens if a piston stops halfway through the cube, you need to understand what happens in the portal paradox. If you're among those that think the cube wouldn't fly out the other end, but would stop instead, well, let's consider some slight modifications to the experiment. Suppose we set up the experiment the exact same way, except that we stacked two cubes on top of each other. Let's assume that I was wrong and that the cubes actually would stop after exiting. Well, as the piston moves down, the first box passes through the portal. And like we stated, the first box stops but the piston continues to move, which pushes the second box through the portal. And the second box is exiting the portal at the same speed as the piston's moving down. So it starts pushing on the first cube that passed through. Now, since the first cube is completely through the portal, the portal can no longer influence it. So the rule about the cube stopping no longer applies to the first cube. From the perspective of the first cube, it's simply being pushed by a second cube. So the regular laws of physics apply here. You don't need to consider portals at all. Now, as the second cube finishes exiting the portal, it stops, but the first cube, having received its momentum after it's passed through the portal, shoots off. Okay, so now let's repeat this experiment, but tie the two cubes together. The first cube, passes through, stops, gets pushed by the second cube, which accelerates it back up to the speed of the piston, and then the second cube stops after it finishes coming through, but the first cube shoots off. But since it's tied to the second cube, it pulls the second cube along with it. Because the cubes are the same weight, you're gonna get roughly half the speed of the first cube, or the piston, for both cubes as they shoot away together. There, it really doesn't matter if you tie the cubes together or if you fuse them together into a single cube. That's because when thinking about these experiments, you can't think of the cube as one giant point mass and you apply the laws of momentum and energy to that giant cube, but you have to consider all the particles together. When you consider the particles, each individual particle is like a cube as it passes through. And then the chemical bonds are like the ropes that tie them together. Even as it passes through the portal, even if it stops, like we're assuming it does, as the rest of the particles come through the portal, they need to push the existing particles out of the way, thus accelerating them. Once the piston hits the floor and the portal stops, all the particles that have already passed through keep their momentum. They continue onward and they pull on with their chemical bonds, all the particles that haven't passed through the portal, pulling them along and the end result is the cube shoots out. So. Even if you tried to implement a realistic physics engine that simulated individual particles where each particle stopped after it exited the portal, it would still end up with the cube shooting out. My solution is not simply an implementation choice. You cannot create a physics engine where a cube stops after exiting the portal without adding 
contradictions to the physics engine. All right, so let's answer some of these questions then. If the cube shoots out, that then doesn't that violate conservation of momentum? Well, yeah, it appears that way, but that's already true with stationary portals. A portal that shoots a cube in the opposite direction as it exits one and comes out going another direction, that violates the conservation of momentum the same way a cube just changing direction in midair would because momentum is a vector not a scalar the direction matters not just the magnitude of that direction although i think i have a solution to this problem let's suppose that the momentum comes from the surfaces that the portals are attached to as the cube enters one portal it imparts momentum on it pushing that surface back and the same applies as the cube shoots out the exit it shoots out and pushes back on the portal it's shooting out of as if you had a spring pushing the two apart. So if you imagine that we hung two surfaces with portals on them on ropes where they could swing freely, if you were to shoot the cube through the entrance portal, it would swing backwards as the cube passed through it, just as the exit portal would swing in the opposite direction of the cube shooting out. So you may be thinking, well, this can't work because portals, they're just holes in space. They're not actually attached to anything. And maybe there could be portals like that, but that's not how portals are shown in this game. If the portals in Portal were really just holes in space, the moment you opened one, it would seemingly shoot away because the Earth's rotating and the Earth's moving around the sun. The test chambers are not sitting still in absolute space, right? Like they're, they're moving. And because the portals are moving with the test chambers, they must be attached to the test chamber somehow. So while a hole in space doesn't have momentum or mass, the surfaces the portals are attached to do. And it's very clear that the portals are attached to those surfaces. I'm putting way too much effort into arguing with people online. <laughs> anyway. What's next? All right, so now that we've explored kind of the physics of objects as they pass through portals and potentially how they could keep momentum, well, what would happen if we were to stop the portal halfway through? Well, we need to consider each individual particle of the cube to figure out what would happen. The particles of the cube that have already passed through the portal will have the speed of the piston as they pass through but the particles that have not passed through won't have that. When the piston suddenly stops, the particles that have already moved through will pull on the particles that have not. And one of two things could happen. Either the half of the cube that's already passed through and is moving will pull the rest of it through, but like in our example of two cubes tied together, it will exit with less speed than it would have if the whole cube went through. The other option is if the chemical bonds are weak enough, the cube just snaps in half. That's because there's gonna be a lot of tension between the particles along the boundary of the portal where uh, on one side of the chemical bonds, there's a lot of fast moving particles and on the other side, they're completely stopped. So whether or not it shoots out with less momentum or rips in half depends on how rapidly you're able to stop the piston and the strength of the material. A big problem that I don't really have a good answer for is what about the conservation of energy? because you're making kinetic energy seemingly out of nowhere. But again, this is already a problem for existing stationary portals. We all know the infinite falling portal trick. You put a portal on the ceiling, a portal on the floor, and you can jump in and you can fall forever. And you pick up speed up to terminal velocity. Well, that kinetic energy has to come from somewhere. And every time you jump up to the portal on the ceiling, you're gaining gravitational potential energy seemingly out of nowhere. So the best hand wavy answer I have is just that the portal requires energy to move things or potentially releases energy like in heat or something as you teleport things from a higher location to a lower location. That's not really a satisfying answer, I know, but I can't think of any other solution other than, you know, magic technology did it. Like I said before, the energy being needed to move a cube that's stationary to moving it's the same problem as moving a cube up into the air magically so i don't think my solution introduces any problems that don't already exist 
And if you have any ideas on how energy could be conserved using portals, like where that energy is coming from, feel free to comment your theories down below. I'd love to hear them. I hope that clears up some of the questions you may have around the portal paradox and give you something interesting to think about. And as always, if you think I'm wrong, go ahead and comment in the comments down below how I'm wrong. And uh, I'd also like to thank Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Link in the description down below. And uh, until next time, take care.